Hello everybody, this is Georg Bielefeld and today I bring you the final wrap up for the Booker Prize 2022. Why do I keep forgetting what year it is? In case you don't know, the Booker Prize is this amazing community event and prize. I link down below the channel so you can see the announcement. By the time this video is up, the announcement will also be up for the finalists. It runs from, I want to say, March to October. So it's basically most of the year, right? It's great. It's really fun. It's just a great way to connect through these books. And this was the first year that we had translated fiction and I really wanted to participate in that. So I'm glad that I got to judge that for the finals. Of course, I'm going to link to my past wrap up which was for nonfiction for the first round. I always start with my least favorite to my most favorite. At the time of recording this video, the results have not been published. Let's talk about the books. Here are six books that I read and reviewed for the Book Book Prize. Number six, The Phone Booth at the Edge of the World by Laura Imai Messina, translated from the Italian by Lucy Rand. This book is bad. It's a bad book. And so this book is about Yui, a woman who loses, I think, her mother and daughter in the 2011, if I'm not mistaken, tsunami. I think she's like a radio show host. And then she discovers that there is an old man that has a phone booth. And yeah, it's just one of those books that is so clearly designed to be a tearjerker. It's just badly written. It has like these intermissions where it does lists. I don't think it's bad because it's commercial fiction. I just think it's bad, period. It wasn't even entertaining. It's the book equivalent of damp white bread. I have nothing more to say about that. Oh, and because this phone booth is a real place, it's hilarious that at the end it feels like the whole book was like a promotional scheme. Honestly, seeing some of the other books that were in the running, I am shocked that this made it. Moving on to a book that I bought but I'm definitely not keeping. This is Disquiet by Zulfu Livanelli and this is translated from the Turkish by Brandon Freely. I had such high hopes of this book. So basically this is about a young man who is Turkish and volunteers at a refugee camp or works. I don't know, but like he goes there and there he meets, a, I want to say Syrian woman and they fall in love and the family is really against it. It's okay. I can see why people like it. So like this is clearly commercial fiction, but compared to the phone booth at the edge of the world, like this at least has more purpose and it has more depth and it has some characterization. It's okay. It's just very clearly like designed to show this reality, no subtlety, there is nothing else prose-wise. And compared to the other books, it just fell short. I still think it's like an okay book. Then one that I'm kind of bummed that didn't make it in my list is The Anomaly by Hervé Letelier. And this is translated from the French by Adriana Hunter. Basically, this starts with this assassin that is very compelling. I would have read a novel just about him. But then what happens is that during a storm, the plane this guy is supposed to go uh, is split into or like duplicates basically. So now there are two of each person that was in that flight. There is like a temporal mismatch. It is very compulsively readable. It does have some pacing issues because I think it just has too many characters. It is very interesting to see how these two paths diverge and how the same person basically under slightly different circumstances behaves entirely different and makes entirely different decisions. Very interesting. It does make you think about like, oh, what makes you you and where your decisions lead you to. I will say that most of the characters are super compelling. It's just that it got distracted by its own premise, if that makes sense. There is also kind of a meta element. There is an author and one of the versions basically i i don't know it's not about the spoilers but i still feel like 
it might come as a surprise. I think it happens quite early on in the book, but like I still don't want to spoil it. Something happens to one of the version of the author and then the other has to cope. I think it's the starkest situation where there is like a complete lack of recognition, like who is this person? This is not me. And it's just so interesting. Where do we begin? Where do we end? What is identity and how is it forged? Is it something super innate or is it something that is much more influx and in relation to our surroundings and our choices? A very interesting book. The prose is great and honestly if the other books hadn't been so so good this would have made it. Then number three is a book that I couldn't get my hands on a physical copy of but that is Brickmakers by Selva Almada and it's translated from the Spanish by Annie McDermott. This was my first Selva Almada, although she's been on my radar for a bit because she's a very famous Argentinian writer. It is very interesting. So it's about these two families of brickmakers. It's about the father of each and the children who are all male. It's also about the wives to an extent, but it's mostly about the men of each family and it is such a macho book. It sort of explores masculinity in very interesting terms. However, halfway through the book, I did start questioning whether I would consider it an exploration or a critique just on the grounds of the prose itself. By which I mean, if I didn't know that the author is a woman, would I feel the same way? Because I understand what it's trying to do. It's just that like it falls into these sexist behaviors. It depicts them in a way that sometimes feels very uncritical. But because of the ending and because I know about Selva Almada, basically, I knew what it was doing. And I was like, no, it's fine. This is what it's doing. But then I'm wondering, am I bringing too much into the text instead of looking at the text? I don't know. Uh, that would be my only like asterisk. However, I did find it fascinating the way that like it's subtly interrupted by female voices, especially like its thoughts on pregnancy, I thought were great. Oh, it has a, such a fascinating, very raw prose. It like it doesn't shy away from profanity, it doesn't shy away. It's not gore, but like just like bodily functions and like fluids and sex in a very like not gentle or not sort of sensorial way it's like so just bare it's not necessarily my favorite style it has to be done really really well for me to like it as much as I did and this definitely achieved that just playing good prose and also how it establishes these two families and it's interconnected episodic stories you see a little bit more of each strand of the family and each relevant member of the family with each fragment and how those interweave I just thought it was really really good however I did have I want to say a problem I think the catalyst fact which again I don't want to reveal in order to not give spoilers but there is something that happens that I think is it a bit exploitative is my question I understand the points that Selva Almada is trying to make and I think as an exploration of violence and masculinity and hyper masculinity is so good I don't think the only way of approaching these scenarios is through critique I think you can depict it and maybe that was what Selva Almada was going for but at the same time, there's a lot of violence against women and a lot of male-on-male -male violence. And if you're just depicting that uncritically, then what's the point? And I don't think Selva Almada is doing that. So it's quite a slippery slope. I am interested in reading more by her. This book was still nonetheless really, really good. And the story is so compelling. It's so subtle even though it's so raw as well. And this is why this is on third place. Then the next book is The Art of Losing by Alice Senitzer. And this was translated by uh, Frank Wynne from the French. So this is about a young woman who is having trouble basically adulting. She starts looking into her heritage, specifically into her family and how they escaped from Algeria and uh, arrived in France and it's an intergenerational tale. It is a bit of a chunker compared to the others but it's so worth it. It also has a bit of a meta element but it's not heavy-handed at all. It is 
so fascinating. The prose is exquisite. I will say that the like second half of the first half, if that makes sense, kind of lost me because it's so much about war. There are a few exceptions, but they are rare and very specific. I just get bored even here when it's charged, of course, with racial politics, which I think are very interesting. I just don't want to read about war so much. I just get so bored. So those parts were a bit of a drag for me. But as soon as it became about the family more and her, I found a such a compelling character. She was my favorite aspect. I liked her as a character, as a focalizer. Prose, I found beautiful right away. There are chapters that are focused on intergenerational relations through sort of reproduction and connection. And there's a lot about family and marriage and the position of the characters in these family structures and mobility. It's just very, very interesting. And again, all wrapped up in just fabulous prose. It's very evocative without being purpley. You know I'm partial to my purple prose, but in this case it's just not that at all. And I also loved how he explored the complexity of heritage and how that is sustained through language, the role of education in enforcing colonialist standards, but also as a possible tool for liberation and happiness and fulfillment. It is just so good and of course again it's not like it packs a lot in not few pages but like i feel like the pages are earned except the war sections which for me dragged so much but that i can admit is personal enjoyment everything else is great and the war sections are very well written it's just that they are not my thing and that's okay i can still admit that it's a really good book and then number one it was really, really close. How to Order the Universe by Maria Jose Ferrada, translated from the Spanish by Elizabeth Breyer. This is a Chilean book, and I know what you're thinking, but I honestly loved it, and I thought it was so, so well done that I couldn't not give it its first spot. I just loved it so much. It is about this seven-year-old girl who starts helping her father out. Her father is a traveling salesman and also a very absent father, both because of his job, but also because of his personality we gather. The story is told through the eyes of the child and we find out pretty soon, but at the beginning is not entirely evident and the way that is revealed is just like so good. It's not a plot twist and it happens again like chapter two or something, and it has really short chapters. So it's not a spoiler. I had forgotten for some reason, or I hadn't read it, because I checked this out of my Chilean digital library, because it was impossible to get here in Spanish. So I had forgotten, and when I understood what was going on early on, I was like, oh, okay. Just like such a subtle strategy that works so well. It also engages with the dictatorship very obliquely. I think you need to know what some cues like if they talk about people who disappeared for example who, for people who never came back then like you know they're talking about that or like they were taken very subtle and again the fact that it's filtered through the eyes of this child is so effective and i know a lot of people actually hate children narrators and i don't love them like i don't actively seek books from that perspective but i think the subtlety in building each of the characters only through the words and observations of this one child it's just so well done really admire a book that is short but effective there are also some instances of class analysis and certain realizations of one's own status and position or how others see you or perceive you or treat you. So a lot of interpersonal minutiae and the idea of like how this child relates to her absent father but like in the text itself it is the mom who is absent and it's just so interesting. The child is so charming like she's so smart and so committed she's good at negotiating and standing up for herself so yeah i just love this book so much can't wait to reread it so that was it i hope you enjoyed this video just as a quick recap the books that i did not advance personally were the phone box at the edge of the world this quiet and the anomaly and then the ones that i did advance were brick makers the art of losing and how to order the universe Okay, so the winners have been announced. Originally, I wasn't sure if I was going to add this little 
extra reaction clip but since i haven't finished editing yet and the results are up i thought why not so the winner was the anomaly by Hervé Letelier and I'm surprised. I didn't expect it. I'm happy with that result. I know I didn't advance it, but I still thought it was a very solid book. The follow-up was The Art of Losing by Alice Zeniter, and I also liked that one quite a bit, so I'm happy with that. And then the third place was Brickmakers by Selva Almada. So basically, my placings were super accurate except for how to order the universe which didn't make it which makes me really sad but i stand by my judgment i think that book is amazing but also i am not biased in the way that like i really want a chilean book to win but of course it would resonate with me a lot i still think regardless of that it is a really really good book but yeah i am really not upset about this result at all. What do you think about the results in general and the books that I reviewed in this video? Please let me know in the comments down below and were there any books that you were really expecting to see in the finals that didn't make it because for me that was definitely crying in H Mart. This was so fun, it was a great year, I can't wait to join for the next one. That's all for this video, see you next time! There are also some intro- there are also some intro- uh,